to be a little gap there. So I'm learning how to use the two adjustments on my uh, planer. This guy right here moves this plate up and down, and this guy right here moves the actual um, blade up and down. It's a fancy spiral cut sucker. But my, my goal here is just to get it so that these verticals and the back are at the same height. Um, I've, I've actually already addressed this whole right side. Uh, I just need to do this one and this one, and I'm only taking down the verticals because um, I've got a nice straight line there all the way to the end. After that, you can just screw the top on after my lovely wife has finished staining it. So it goes a little something like, wait, let me make sure these are all in the middle of the range. Put that in about one, put that in about half C's. All right. So that's the annoying part, because I can't get to it because the motor's right here. So last time I tried going like this, riding along here, so it won't cut that because the plate is preventing it. So when I get to there, it'll go chop, 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 chop. But the problem is it splintered the veneer over here on the previous one. So I'm going to notch that veneer so that it won't splinter. It'll just break at the notch. I'll probably put a, a piece of aluminum there and uh, come across with a utility knife. And then I'll do the same thing over on this one. Well, actually, let me just do that one. So yeah, I mean, that's not much else to see there, huh? Hello, boys and girls. Today, I'm going to screw this thing into the wall. As you see here, I have attached three shelves. Un, deux, trois. But I left out two shelves <clears throat> right here and right here. Now, why'd you do that? All, what? Great question. Look at this dot right here. See that dot? I marked the location from the side of the stud that's in the back wall that I want to attach it to, and I'm going to go bloop right in there. Then, I'm going to put this pretty little shelf right here in there and glue it in after I have screwed through there and into the stud in the back. Probably use a two and a half inch screw. This is serious stuff. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here where I've marked another stud location. Yeah. And I think those two screws will be sufficient to hold the whole thing from falling down. We'll see, huh? You'll screw them into the wall? Yeah, I'm going to screw it right into the wall. Bam, like that. Um, <clears throat> then I'm going to screw the top on the whole thing. And after that, it's just finished trim work, which should be really fast. So that's it and for make today. Sure it's not sharp. Like that no. Do it. Nope. Do it. Stop it. We're just the button. Yeah. What's sharp? Hey, yo. I was almost finished with this, and suddenly I discovered that gap. Look at that gap. And you can press down right here, and it kind of goes away, <laughs> but not much. It's still a gap. It's gross. Look down here. Look at that. Isn't that nice? You can't even tell. Look at that. Look at that corner. Woo! And look cool. underneath it. Look at that. Look at that. That's pretty good, too. So that's nice because these two boards are dadoed together. This guy right here, there's a dado where that joint is also. And I suppose what I need to do here is see <laughs> those guys just don't match up quite because uh, it's not exactly a routed super flat cut. And I'm just setting this top board on here. It's not attached yet, but now my plan is to get a dado for every one of these and along the back also. The back's going to be really easy, but um, but each of these, I still have my jig set up in the garage, so it shouldn't be too bad. And my plan, though, is to mark it with a utility knife right here and here and then at the back on both sides. And then... Uh, the problem is, though, it will move as I mark the next one. It could... Right, so uh, I filled up the card, but I was just going to tell you my big secret. I'm going to put a screw in here, boop, and a screw in the other corner over there that you'll never know about either one of them, and then I'll make the little notches with the, um, with the utility knife here and here, and at the back side there and there on each of these, and then I'll know exactly where the dados belong. I've still got my jig set up, and uh, we'll put that to good use, come down just a little bit, and everything will look nice and nested, and I don't care if the tops don't match. And that's the very last plywood step. Then I'll uh, probably screw that in from above, obviously, and um, 
probably put some stuff over here to like slam it to the left and some stuff over there to slam it to the right some shimmin stuff glue those in place and then uh, we just do the finished wood and uh, put some screws in some hooks in and the sucker is ready to go hey we're at the point where i have um gotten finally i got that top piece in that i was talking about last uh i actually took like two months off of working on this thing um anyway it it wasn't fitting and so i had to relieve each of those notches there I, I cut a little dado so that it plopped right down and i actually put some screws in the top to just hold it in place you know whatever that's the top i can't see it <laughs> and um maybe people who are six foot five can but they're not welcome in my house anyway consider this though down here i am just going to be um putting a whole bunch of biscuits in and you see those little notches that i cut i, I spaced them really close over here because the bench actually goes a little bit but then it's pretty straight later on and of course the board that i'm going to be using to cover up the gross plywood effect is um nice and straight so uh, oh, it, it's gross because it hasn't been stained yet. <clears throat> That's the next step. Um, I put some biscuits in here. I just laid out from the right edge some certain number of inches for each cut and then um, got the biscuits sliced in, the holes for the biscuits. And so you see a line up nice and pretty. And then when it is stained, I'll just plop it in there. And then um, I, he, let me tell you a little bit about my plan. I, I got this one biscuited and I got this top one biscuited also and then I'm going to come down with some verticals I'm going to put a vertical on each of these so they're going to be solid verticals except for the horizontal that is at the very top and then we're going to come in at, at the very final step when the two verticals are in like here and here and go across right there but there's one other thing I wanted to show you and that's that this top piece because the tops don't line up like that's kind of gross that's kind of gross and that's particularly gross, but the other direction, see that? Look at that. And then, uh, oh yeah, here's another gross one. It's just, you know, it's just kind of my rough carpentry attitude that's making it not quite line up with anything. Um, and then uh, I, I decided to relieve the back of the board that goes there. So you see that I cut the biscuits after I relieved the back. And now this thing notches in and will cover up all of my wrongness right there as it kind of uh, places in nice and tight and then that means though that i'll have to relieve the backs of all of the other pieces on the top work um, so that means the verticals that come next and then the um uh, in the end uh the small horizontals that are covering up the bottom of the top shelf so let's just try to get a little perspective on this project. Um, the the bottom stuff, it doesn't need to be relieved. I'm just going to jam it in there, measure the angle, and get it right. And the uh, bottom piece is just being held in place with biscuits, and everything is nice and sharp there at the bottom. But up at the top, we had to do some relief. That's all. Whatever. I'll check back in when I've got some more assembled. Hopefully, the next thing we really need to talk about is putting the polyurethane on. Almost there. Okay. How many clamps are there here? Why are there so many clamps? I don't know. Well, what do you think we're doing here? Did you help me with the biscuits? What? The biscuits? They're inside. Remember, we put a lot of biscuits in and we put glue on them? Those biscuits like that? We put those biscuits there to make the wood joint good. The biscuits are going to absorb the wood glue and expand in the slots, and that will hold this right in place when the glue dries. What has to hold it in place right now while the glue is drying? Do you know? How can it work? Well, we're waiting for the glue to dry. And when the glue dries, what's going to hold it all in place? Hmm? Clean it up for me. Good. Get a little bit more. Ah, goof. A little bit. And so it looks okay. I don't know. It's I mean it's not great. It's definitely not great. There's a little line there that you can see. Uh, it looks a lot better over here. 
I'm actually I'm proud of that over there. That looks good. Um, and as we go over here, it just wasn't wasn't tightening up. We clamped it, we grabbed, and we twisted the clamps. But what I realized is we needed to start shimming in between the clamp and the board. And so that's what I've done over here. I put um, this first, let's call it a fascia on to cover up that plywood. First of all, look at that, that's pretty nice. I didn't do any biscuits for this joint. I was just thinking I'd, I actually um, routed out the back of it. Little rabbit, I guess, uh, all the way down. And as you can see at this intersection as well. And then glued that groove. And uh, then I put a clamp around here nice and tight. But I've got this shim in here so that I'm applying inward pressure on it. I was having a lot of trouble figuring out how to get inward pressure on it, but I think that's going to work. What say you? <laughs> Took my umbrella out. Well, sorry about your umbrella. That was my cubby. Uh, right. It's not your cubby yet. We're working on it. Are you gluing those there? Are they just yeah, wedges? Don't touch it. Put them there. Yep. Cool. Those wedges those. are putting pressure on the wood um, that is squeezing the glue in between it and the other board. So then we'll do the other verticals and I won't show them off unless I'm really excited about them. But I kind of think I need to get some more wood scraps so I can do more than one a, a day. And then, uh, and then we'll do these horizontal pieces right here. In the meantime, we can do some of this lower work. Let's see down here what we've got going on. We can do that drop right there. Boom. And then finish up that baseboard. Yay. It's been more than a year. And then under here, you got yourself uh, just a little bit of an angled piece that I'm going to need to cut. I'm just going to, I'm probably not even going to cut it right up here. I'll just cut it sloppy up there, and then I'll cut it pretty down there. Oh, no, I'm going to have to do something because there's not much of a gap there. Well, okay, I'll probably cut it flush vertical here and then cut it at the uh, parallel to the floor cut right there. But I know that angle. And, um, and then just make a bunch of those and put those in with the same method. It's going to be... Uh, I'll just need one clamp to push that in because it'll naturally push itself in at the floor if I push it in at the top. No clamps to put you in like that. Great. But you will you stay stuck? That's the issue. No, I can get up. Right. See, that's why we need clamps.